Okay, so it's uh, especially for Rahul, just some liners of introduction. Uh, first day we have started with the introductory class of, of what is data and what different kind of data representations, uh, representations are there, especially uh, what is SQL language, what is NoSQL. NoSQL means not only SQL. So mm -hmm. SQL is based on st structural data, just like the data we are saving in database, relational database rather we can say, and the same data we can check or do any kind of uh, whatever languages we are using to retrieve the data from the database, to create the data inside the database that is handled by SQL, okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we started the SQL topic, how to write the code. So till last two days, we have checked these two things, DDL and DML. DDL, mm -hmm. I mean, we are segregating the S whole SQL in these three, five, I mean, these five parts. Okay. The first two parts, the first part DDL means how to create the data objects. Data object means there are various kind of objects. The most popular object is called the table. Table mm -hmm. is the most popular and the most basic thing that we can store the data inside a database. So in DDL, we have learned how to create table how to drop means delete a table, how to alter. Alteration of the table means we can add a new column. Suppose we have created a table, suddenly a requirement comes from the business that we need that particular column. Okay, so we then we need to go ahead with the alteration of the table rather doing a dropping of the same table and creating the table again, we will be altering the table. And truncate okay. of the table means it will truncate all the data inside the table. So this comes comes under DDL. How the DDL we have, I mean, other different kind of DDLs we have performed. Please watch the recording; it should be helpful. Then we okay. just go ahead with DML statements. DML is nothing but the data. DDL is totally the language related to table structure. I mean, how we will be establish a new table structure or old table structure, anything related to table structure that is been done by DDL. DML is tables data. If we want to insert any new records, if we want to update any existing record, if you want to delete any existing record, then DML is necessary. Mm -hmm. DML, the full form of DML is data manipulation language. DDL is data definition language. Okay. Mm -hmm. So these two things we have focused on last two days with lots of examples and all. So I'll be giving some hands-on uh, I'm not sure whether tomorrow the classes will be there because of uh, I was checking some status for Ganesh Chaturthi immersions and all. So if um, tomorrow everyone, I mean, there is no classes, then try to check the recordings once more. And I'll be giving two exercises. Okay. Uh, this, okay. Ramya, you are also asking for the same. It's also, I mean, it's for applicable for the same. I need one help. Maybe uh, Sandeep, you are working on that collection of this, everything. So you can help uh, whoever missed today's class. So I'll be pinging that uh, questions to uh, in the WhatsApp group. So the first question, there are two questions, question one and question two. That's the first part, create table based on each subject areas. Okay, so uh, what we have to do, we have to open this Excel, test Excel sheet. I'm just showing for question one. Okay, so mm -hmm. I have opened this Excel. The first question is create tables in the database based on each of the three subject areas. There are three subject areas. I have created this thing in Excel. So you have to create respective tables three tables in database consisting this kind of data okay similar thing for second thing as well so just cover the first part as of now the first part will taking care for ddl and dml proficiency okay second third fourth as of now no need to do we will be covering dql i will be starting dql part today it will take some time mostly two to three days to be completion. I mean, to complete the uh, DQL part. As soon as this is completed, then you can go ahead the other parts, two, three, four, and two over here. So as of now, just cover up the first section for each of the question. And I'll be 
pinging my mail IDs. So please put me the code. Okay, I'll be checking and let you know whether it's fine or what needs to be correct. Any doubt so far? Ramya. Rahul, it's fine. The basic you got it. Yeah, yeah. So, so just you will be that. sharing it yeah. in the WhatsApp group, right? So yeah, I'll be sharing in WhatsApp group. Sure. So that everyone can see it. But uh, whoever did not join, if anyone is having any contact with them, because I used to see that the first day lots of people joined, but uh, today lots of people didn't join. So please circulate this thing so that they can cope up with the same. Okay. So let's start with the DQL part. Okay. One more thing, Rahul, for the demonstration purpose, we have installed the database called MySQL. Okay, so day two, I think we have demonstrated how to install it. MySQL is an open source free database is available. So please okay. install it and we can access the same database by the software MySQL Workbench. Okay, okay. so this is our database instance. MySQL so this works on Mac? Uh, for Mac, it is also available for Mac version. Please check it once. Okay. I hope it's there. MySQL download format. It's in the end. Last second. Yeah. So is there any specific one I should download? Yeah, I didn't check it uh, for Mac earlier. Uh... Yeah, it's in yeah. task compress. Just download. I'm it. aware of it. Like okay. you need to check the the uh, the silicon strip or some other. I think you need to check with that, and you need to download based on that. Oh, what is silicon strip? Oh, in Mac you need to check. Uh, once you click on the iPhone i icon, i that icon would be present. No, the Apple one. The, then you will find uh, what kind of configurations it have and you need to download accordingly to that. Yeah. Mine is M2 okay. chip. Okay, later we can discuss it later. Let's uh, not disturb the class. No, no. It's okay, Rama, you have already experience on top of... Uh, you have the Mac OS with you, correct? Uh, Ram Sai, you have the... Yeah, Mac yeah, OS. yeah. I'm I'm Sandeep actually. This uh, Zoom is different one. Okay, yeah. Sandeep. Yeah, please help that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, there were a couple of videos in YouTube also. You can check it and you can download that. Like I used to do that earlier in that way. Okay, so, okay. Uh, if you face any difficulty, Rahul, then please tell me once more. Tell us and can also try to check. Okay, yeah. so I think Sandeep has uh, the solution and you can check the demonstration over there too. Okay, so I can just check it's compressed to start. So you, can, you have to enter it first and then install it. Try to have once if you are facing any. Okay, the interface should be coming like uh, this way. MySQL instance over there. Uh, during the installation part, we have to configure the credentials as well, especially the password. Okay, so each time, each day when you are, you will be logging into that particular SQL instance. Okay, so root is my user account. This particular port should be there for MySQL. It's a default port. Each of the individual databases is having their default port. If you are installing some other databases, maybe MS SQL Server, Microsoft SQL Server, there should be a default port. Okay, so just you need to double click on that instance and you have to give the password what you have configured at the beginning and you can able to check the databases okay so in the left hand panel those are the databases present in that instances those are called database schemas okay for individual purposes we can save the schemas over here for our learning purpose, I saved this particular schema called Tetra Data underscore training. Okay. So inside there, you can see, as I mentioned, there are lots of database objects are available. Over here in the, over this pane, we can see there are tables, views, store procedures, functions. Those are there. 
as of now the basic the most basic and the most important things are called table and it's a unit one so when the tables are ready we can go ahead with views and store procedures those kind of things those are a bit advanced thing we'll be definitely covering up the things when the tables things are covered okay currently we are learning tables the last two days we have worked with creation of some tables just like employee is one of them okay if i just click on employee we can see uh, those are the different columns available okay so this is not the same table actually what i have created i have added some more columns from the employee you can see there are employee id column and the right hand side it's called data type data type means what kind of data the particular column should be having employee id should be having integer data type the data should be integer in nature employee first name employee last name those should be where care means string data type having the maximum length of 40 if i'm going to insert a value more than 40 then i'll be getting error in the insert statement so that is why i need to give the size properly employee experience called exp in integer salary in integer department in where care date of birth date date data type the data type we have gone through in the study session okay so our first dql statement we are learning now dql that means data query languages data query language the main syntax for data query language is select okay so select star from select and from is keyword star i am using if i am using star means all the records and all the columns should be showed especially all the columns should be showed from this employee table employee is a table name this is the table name if, if i put select star from table all the columns should be shown over here at the output pane i'm just selecting this and executing this command i can see this is the output of this table you can match the column name it's matching over here and here and this is how the data look, is looking like okay so the data set is created based on uh, some organizations maybe uh, in the industry i have taken a uh, stat from 10 people okay and uh, each of them you can just check the department each of them is having data department just like it buit means uh, business it bpo two persons are having bpo designation bm is business analyst two hrs one more it one ba so this is the overall thing the name first name their experience how much salary they are i mean receiving uh and the date of birth okay so date of birth is a uh, by default null it's it's a i mean an, uh, i did not impose a not null constraint there so that is why uh, i can see i haven't inserted the record over here and i faced no issue so basically i can say the particular employee did not share the date of birth with us that is why i haven't stored it okay okay so going forward while learning the dql we will be working with this data set only now the second thing we are putting star over here just to select all the columns available in the table now i want to print few columns i do not require all the columns over here so i can eliminate star instead of star i can put whatever column name is i want to whatever column i want to see at the output i just i can type it there with the comma separator if we have multiple columns just like employee id I want to check department. I want to check experience. I don't want to check first time and last time. I want to check employee ID, department, experience, salary. Just this four. But the uh, row should be, I mean, the column name should be separated by comma. Okay. The la After the last column, we do not have to put the comma put the comma in between each of the column 
whatever order you are putting it the same order the output should be shown okay employee id department experience salary so we are doing a column limiter operation it's called also we can call it slicing of the database or table we are slicing the main table and we are just putting output over here okay one more very very important concept when running this select query select query is mainly for visualization purpose we are visualizing the data in this manner but the main difference between dml and this dql for dql execution we are not hampering the storage data we did not delete the two columns from here from this table we are visualizing in this manner but we are not impacting anything in the tables data okay later we will be doing row limiter operation there you can see lots of rows are eliminated that doesn't mean that the rows are the data are not getting eliminated from employee table because the data can only be handled by dml languages so i can insert that i can add record i can delete record i can update record only by dml statement dql is mainly for different types of visualization on top of table how we want to visualize the table that is totally dependent on dql okay so this is one of the main thing many of the people can say okay uh, let me just show me in the next some examples you can see lots of rows are getting eliminated when i'm imposing filter operation when i'll be doing aggregations the whole structure will be modified so but we are not saving this thing in our database until an answer i mean uh, um, until i am just doing another dds statement on top of the sql statement that is also possible but in advanced level we'll, we are not going to this today maybe tomorrow or day after tomorrow on top of this visualization i can create a new table or i can insert the data in a new table then on top of this dql we can create new table that is fine but when we are just doing a simple select statement we are not going to impact any existing record it's just for different types of different observation different types of data visualization okay any doubt on this thing i hope this is understandable but if there is any doubt please tell me no no doubt okay thanks thanks just i observed i mean all of you are having the I mean, starting with the name with the r alphabet okay that's fine okay first of all we are just doing this it's called slicing i'm just doing this with this thing i can also put this way okay, i hope this should be working no this is not working for this database okay so it's column limiter operation also we can put it's a column level filter operation now how row level filter operation should be done okay even i can put all the column names over here even i can type this thing twice okay there will be no issue for column limiter how much i mean how many way i want to see it i can just i have to put the column in this manner there will be no issue i'm going to the original one our second topic for today filtering a data set the previous example was filtering the columns now i'll be filtering on top of data set suppose i have millions of records but i don't want to see all the records uh, my requirement is to check only the department of it employees okay so we need to use the filter operation to do the row level filter operation or data level filtration we need to use where keyword where we, we use that where keyword earlier in dml execution you, if you can remember for the update statement and delete statement we use this kind of filter operation because 
while doing the update statement execution we use where clause as we have to uh, impact the data based on specific logics or specific rows only if we do not put where clause it can be impacted for the all the records so for the dml classes i mentioned this thing multiple times dml statement especially for update and deletion of the record we are putting this kind of where clause there as well just to put filter on particular rows only <laughs> excuse me okay so how the where should be working suppose i want to show only the it department record then i need to put department equal it okay department equal it i'm just putting this thing let me run the entire syntax so you can see it's just pull those records whose departments are id okay it is a varchar thing as department is varchar in nature that is why i am telling these things multiple times that is why i am putting the data inside a single code if we are doing some operation on top of integer value suppose i'm just doing salary select start from employee whose salary is greater than 1 lakhs okay so 1 lakhs means salary is a salary is a integer data type so i do not have to put code i can put code there but it is my option i can choose my way but i cannot put i can put as well but for haircut thing we must have to put a code at the beginning and at the end okay okay so those many people is having salary more than 1 lakhs okay so this thing we are working as a comparison the filter is working as a comparison so i can compare this thing i can compare greater than greater than equal less than less than equal not equal okay i'll be showing this thing one by one those are i'm imposing filter on top of some comparison okay even i can do multiple condition in a single statement so where salary greater than 1000 and i can use and keyword and department equal it that should uh, it will return no value because you can see in this data set there is no such it department employees available whose salary is more than one lakh if i just run this thing i should be having zero record okay let's change the it department to bpo let's see whether there is any yeah one person was there having 20 years of experience in bpo he is receiving nearly more than one lakh salary okay so what i am tra trying to say i am imposing multiple conditions and passing it to end we can also use or operator or just like the same logical or and logical and when both of the things needs to be satisfied then we need to put and any of the name i mean um, if we put or it's logical or means any of them should be there okay so i can put multiple conditions as well separated by and and or there will be no issue what are the other things restricting selection using comparison operator that i just showed to you restricting selection in in keyword when in is been used okay let me show when i just want to till now i'm showing this thing department equal equal when i'll be using if i want to check only one data i mean only one kind of department then i put equal it suppose i want to filter the data set i want the employees having designation as it and bpo both of them if this is the scenario equal will not work then i need to use in and i need to enclose this thing wrap this thing in a bracket if we are using in i can use 
I can use one or multiple selection over here, just like this way. Where department in IT and BPO. Okay, I can put multiple things, HR. So that is the utilization of in keyword. If we am using equal, this thing will fail. This will not work. It's a syntax error. Operand should contain only one column. Okay, there, there are multiple things. That is why I need to use in. Okay, what are the other things? Uh, restricted based on pattern matching. Okay, so uh, this is a good thing actually. Okay, let me give us an example. I'm just running this thing, select star from employee. I'm not including everything to check the entire data set. Okay. So uh, suppose the thing is uh, from uh, I, I am suppose I'm the owner of the company. I got impressed on a particular lecture provided by some of the employees over here. But I forgot the name. I can recall the surname. I can recall the surname of the employee, but I forgot the particular name of the employee. I just can remember that the particular employee's starting name is starting with M only. That is the only clue I'm having. But I want to uh, give award to that particular employee or I want to have a quick contact with that particular employee. Then how I can search from the database? It's a very small database actually in my company. Maybe I have 1000 or 2000 data should be there. So from 2000 data, hi, how I want to search it? How I can filter out lots of records and going towards that particular employee's record. So there we can use this pattern based matching. Pattern based means like, okay, like keyword should be there. How that should be work? So employee first name, as the employee's first name will be starting with M character, I can put in this way, where employee first name, like, I'm not using equal, not using in, like is, I just can remember it is starting with M, that is fine. And the rest of character I do not recall. So I can use this kind of wild card, percentage. Percentage means, percentage can be replaced by any value, okay? So M percentage means here, infinite number of data should be there. That doesn't matter, but it should be starting with M. So percentage is nothing but wild character I can replace. Let me run this thing. So I can see starting with M, we have two first names available. Now I can put, I remember the last name as well. It's Saker. I can put and employee last name equal Saker. Let me run the same. Yes, we have the same record. Yeah, now I can quickly recall. Yeah, his name is Money Seeker. So I can approach to him. Okay, so this is the thing I want to show you. This is wildcard, I mean, matching, pattern based matching, pattern, pattern based filtering thing over here. Okay. Restricting selection between between and and keyword. Okay. So uh, let me run the main query again. Okay. Suppose I have the requirement from my manager. He told identify the people whose experience is between 6 to 10 years of experience. <laughs> then we can use this. When we are just selecting some based on some range selection, we can use between and keyword where experience between six and ten. This we need to put experience is the column. This is between keyword, this is and keyword. 
Okay. So those are the three persons whose experience is having six and ten. We can use the same thing. We can uh, we should put two filters, separate filter in this way as well. Between and is the simplest one. Instead of between and, we can also use in this manner. Employee, I mean, experience greater than equal six and experience less than equal ten. This is what the between and and keyword is working. Okay. Yeah, someone drop off. I think uh, he is not comfortable for this class. Sorry, he want to revisit the previous courses. But uh, so far, there is any doubt, any stuck point, please do ask me and I mean uh, questions so that your con I mean doubt should be clear. And the thing is a bit of fun. I mean, if you're trying in this way, I mean, lots of things you can also get it from here and you can also try to implement the same thing at your own way okay no issue restricting based on null value if we want to check the null value just like uh, i have put some null value in the date of birth <coughs> so i just want to check the null value how to check that for null value where date of birth is for null value we need to put this way is null null should be in capital null this is how to check null value okay those particular employees doesn't have any date of birth for not null you can use this thing not null okay for any not operation I'm just coming through this thing once more time. For any not operation, I can use this kind of operator. Just like where department not equal IT. So it's a not operator means instead of IT, it will be showing all the other department's value. So I just eliminated IT. Till now we're using equal in and not means a totally different thing we can also use i think exclamation equal or not null this is different kind of syntax representation but the meaning are same this is also same exclamation equal means not in okay any one of them we can use for not equal either this either this this or this okay so this is how we can check not equal but for null value comparison we need to use is is not okay i can put any way because sql um, is i mean uh, it's not a case sensitive language not i can put in caps as a small as i mentioned sql is not a case sensitive language okay okay this is called filter operation we are filtering the data set based on our requirement any doubt so far uh, yes okay so do we need to use the only the capitals for the null no i can also use small null okay. yeah so as equal is uh, confused, uh because you said you uh capital Null. No, no, the, so. that, yeah, yeah. So mainly null is been focused as over here, capital null. That is why I told this. Okay. But as equal is case sense, I mean, case insensitive, we can put small null. Okay. okay. But mainly null is been represented over everywhere in capital null. Maybe that's why I told over here as well. You can see it's null, anyway. Null. Mm -hmm. sure. null means there is no data actually. Uh, yeah. But I can put anyway as. SQL is case insensitive. Okay. Okay. So this slide, it's very important. Hopefully that is clear. I'm moving to the next one. Distinct. Okay. Distinct is a keyword to get the distinct value. 
Okay, let me show why we should use the distinct. Okay, I'm putting select department from employee. So I'm checking uh, the department. Uh, suppose I have 10,000 of records, okay, from my employee information. Suppose I'm owning a company, I'm, I want to check in the statistics how many departments are available. So I'm just putting department from employee, but I want the distinct value, okay? So that is why I can put a distinct keyword at the beginning. Distinct department from employee. If I just check it, I can check the removal of duplicates from that thing, okay? The, so we have the distinct of, I mean, we have the department IT, BUIT, BPO, BA and HR. Those are the departments available in my employee table. Okay, that is why distinct keyword is been used. I can use multiple column over here as well. Just like department and experience. If we just put this thing, I'm running this thing. So all the 10 records are there because over here, how it is treating? It is checking the combination of individual department and experience. So IT and six, it's checking. As there is no such duplicate combination between department and IT. So if we put distinct over here, if we do not put a distinct, it should be having the same result because the combination of department and experience, there is no such duplicates. If we just only put department, then only we can check the how the difference is coming. <coughs> okay. I can check distinct experience, then I think also the thing should be limited. Yes, not all the 10 records are there. Because maybe there are two or three persons having six years of experience. We are just showing only one. So the, I just I want to mean that I can use over here multiple columns based on, I mean, uh, Suppose I want to check how many records based on the combination of these columns are available. Then we can put in this manner. Okay. Distinct may be operate on top of multiple columns as well. But it should be always put after select statement. Select distinct, then columns list. Okay. Moving to the next one. Column alias. Okay, this is one more, I mean, one of the important thing. Column alias, let me print select star from employee. Back to the main table. Okay, so column alias means, uh, suppose I am representing the data in front of some business user. They are not, I mean, they are not very much technical. Suppose I want to update, I mean, uh, they're not going to understand why we are putting underscore over here, why we are not putting all the full name. Okay, so before presenting the same thing, we want to update this kind of columns in the representation, just like select exp. Okay, I'm putting employee ID exp and salary i'm presenting this thing instead of exp i want to show the output as experience in total key i mean total words <coughs> i need to use as after experience i'm putting as keyword and then i'm put i can put the one which i want to show okay exp as experience it's called the alias you can see in the main data sets it's got updated to experience okay so this is called alias even i can omit this as as well i can just put the column name the old column name and the new column name. You can see the column name has been updated. 
a quick note on top of this but i mean the thing is i'm updating the column name over here but the column name is not getting updated in the table side it's only getting updated at the visualization as i mentioned column name i can only update in which kind of language anyone ramya column name can be updated in which language ddl correct uh data manipulation i think no no, no data manipulation in is based on totally data inside the table okay okay so experience some changing um, column means some changing the table structure so okay we have to use let me use the alter statement i have shown this thing earlier alter table table name rename is the keyword rename column rename you can put exp to experience that is permanently changing the column so that's why alias is not changing the column name alias is just changing the visualization of that column on that select query okay that is the main thing i want to say ddl and dml it's fixing the data we are just doing a different type of visualization over here by dql statement okay give me some second yes so i can do multiple uh, thing as well not only experience i can put salary as employee salary i can put as keyword i cannot put as well but the alias should be working as employee salary okay now one more thing i want to eliminate uh, the underscore i want to keep it in separate word then i need to put this thing within quote employee suppose employee id otherwise it should be throwing error <laughs> okay so you can see we have declared it with it with the space so when declaring this thing in a space we need to mention this code otherwise it will throw an error it will be identifying employee id as a column then we are not putting comma over here so a red color error is been thrown over here so those are the different types of alias we can go ahead uh, so do we not need to ask uh, keyword when we are using the inverted commas no no as we can use cannot okay. use as is optional okay, okay. yes yeah, sure. i i mean just give a different example alias mm -hmm. as if we put as, as then it's a I mean, standard way to showing the code but uh, lots of times due to i mean maybe we are in a hurry we have to code quickly uh, so we have to do smarter way as much as i mean i have to put the less number of lines or codes uh, this is good for me that is why i told if we do not put as as well it will be working as alias okay right. it's for applicable for all the aliases not only for uh, this okay the next topic concatenation operator this is a function concat is a inbuilt function suppose okay this example is a bit tough i'll not be moving to concatenation today okay so when we'll be going at with derived column as of now we did not introduce a derived column whatever columns are there inside the same database inside the same table we are playing with this thing only so concat is a derived column we can introduce new column with calculation let me finish today's class maybe tomorrow i'll be showing concatenation okay aggregation very very important thing aggregation of data this kind of aggregation we can do summation max mean count average those are different aggregation functions available okay how to do the aggregation 
suppose i want to check the maximum experience select max max is a inbuilt function aggregation in i mean those are the inbuilt function max of experience exp not experience for that query i use that alias but it will if i just put experience it will not able to find the value so select max experience from employee it will be helping me i mean with the output maximum experience was 20 let me quickly check whether it's really 20 or not i'm putting the original query at the below yes it's 20 and i'm getting the correct one okay uh, but my requirement may different i want to check maximum of the experience but based on individual department i want to see it how to do that so i need to introduce a new column over here called department each individual department i need to get the maximum experience suppose the output should be just like this so for it maximum experience should be returned six for buit or you have only one resource that is 16 for bpo we should be returned 20 for hr it should be returning 15 for ba it should be returning 10 i want to check the output in this manner not only max experience i want to check the data specific department i want to get the output then i need to group all the group based on department how to do that i need to introduce group by group by clause after when the table is finished or table name is completed then we need to put group by department okay and i need to also show this department over here too so select max experience department these two column will be shown from employee is fine group by i'm grouping the data set based on department let me run this thing okay so individual each of the department i am getting the maximum experience i want to check the average salary based on each of the department those are very very important we are going to playing with the data those aggregation functions are very important especially uh, for the data owner they are doing these things or data who are playing with data this is one of the basic building blocks called aggregation okay the data scientist or data engineer or data analytics anyone the aggregation is the one of the main thing they are doing maybe that their aggregation is a much more complex but we'll be going to these things no worry but uh, this is the basic thing i want to check the average salary based on department okay so you can see this is the average salary so it is having the average salary this buit is this 2.5 lakhs per annum bpo is this ba is this business analytics hr is this okay so this is how the aggregation can work on top of grouping data set okay i can change the thing okay what are the different things summation max mean count okay sum up the same thing i can represent by other things sum means summing i'm summing up all the it department salary okay even i can put multiple things over here as well i need to group the same thing on based on i'll be grouping the columns i can i have to represent the same non-aggregating columns over here as well suppose department first name if i'm putting employee first name then no need to do the grouping things because there is distinct uh 
department and employee first names combination. Let's use a count. I want to check how many counts are there for each of the department of the people. So I can simply use count. I can put department or I can simply put one, anything. Okay, for IT department, there are three person, for BYT one person, BPO two person, BA two person, HR two person. I can also use department over here as well. Okay. This is fine. For aggregation, any doubt? Aggregation is very, very important. Please try this thing as soon as you completed the aggregation part. Especially grouping on something. Okay. If we want to put where keyword, okay, let me do one thing. If you want to put where keyword, where should I put where? Where means row limitation. Whether I have to put over here or here. Where should be having higher precedence. So, where I need to put as soon as the table is completed. I mean, table name is put. So, where I need to use over here. Where department equal or in or not, not equal. Let me put not equal, IT. So, I am eliminating IT department over here. It will eliminating IT department. After that, they will be doing the aggregation. Let me run the entire query. You can see IT will be removed from this data set. Okay. This is how where clause should be worked. And on based on the query output, On top of aggregation, if I, this is a calculative column over here as well. This count of department was not there in the data set. I introduced this new column over here. So if I do any kind of filter in this, it will not work because where we'll be working over here with the inbuilt column, what were there, what were there in the employee database, it will only operate on top of those columns but in the same query if i want to do any filtering conditions on top of this in build color i mean those calculative columns i need to use having keyword so having is just working similar kind of filter operation but on top of aggregating columns because where will not do the filter operation on top of this so i want to check the single employee where count of department equal one so i want to check uh, the, where is the single employee decides okay byt only one employee is residing or greater than two i want to check is having multiple employee employees available okay so let me repeat once more time where is the filtering clause we learned today it's mainly for a filtering operation for the data which is there inside the table the column which is there inside the table for any calculative column especially when it's an aggregation function we are implementing if we do any kind of filtering operation on top of this aggregation function after group by when group by is completed then we need to use <coughs> Having keyword. Okay. Having and it should be working the similar kind of things in the wire filtering class. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, it's clear for everyone. <coughs> Ramya Rahul. Yeah. Please do uh, have a quick example at your own because this is a bit complex. If you stuck in anywhere, please ask me questions tomorrow as well. Okay, the last this topic. Having is just like a uh, where uh, keyword, right? Uh, only thing is it is used on the aggregated columns only. Correct, correct, correct. The operational function is same, but it should be working the aggregation. I can use on top of, I can use this aggregation column, 
by where as well. But I'll not be learning. I'll be not showing this thing today because this where is not quite handle this having. If I build a query on top of this query, then I can use this aggregation column filtering operation by where. This topic I will show you on tomorrow. That is the concept in subquery. Um, aggregating columns is just this uh, uh, functions like sum max and uh, average. Correct, correct. correct. Those are the aggregation function. And can... uh, we don't use uh, having at uh, any other places uh, instead of this aggregated uh, functions. Correct, correct. Having is only used for doing the aggregated column. Okay. Okay. Good questions. Okay. Uh, so tomorrow I'll be showing. Please remember me once more time tomorrow when we'll be learning subquery. There we will be using where clause on top of this aggregating column as well. This is possible. But we need to use subquery. What is subquery concept we'll be learning tomorrow. Okay. So one more topic is left. Sorting of the data. Uh, it will take two minutes. Sorry. I just... Uh, in, I mean, exceeded the time limit. <clears throat> okay, the last part is order by. Order by means I want to short the data. If I want to short the data, maybe you can see the data is not shorted. I want to check the department should be shorted or maybe the experience should be shorted. So based on any column, I want to short the entire database, how it should be looking like. So then we need to use order by keyword, keyword, order by. So just like select star from employee, order by. Okay, order by suppose department. So department is a worker column. So it will be operating a shorting operation on top of string. And you can see BA is, I mean, based on the alphabetical order, order B should be coming first. B A then B P O then B U I T A two H R and three I T. Okay, similar kind of I can do experience. It's a numerical column. Okay, so you can see the list of experience people they're coming first. Okay, so if we do not put simply put order by a particular column by default it should be ascending in nature. Suppose I want to check it descending in nature how to check it <coughs> sorry for my voice low sometimes i mean i am having some cups so sorry no for worry. that okay uh, uh, order by experience put dsc dsc means descending okay descending means uh, <coughs> uh, the top i mean the most experience should be coming first and the least experience curve should be coming last. Okay. And by default, it should be ascending. We can put ascending keyword. We cannot put as well because by default, it should be ascending in nature. But the ascending keyword is ASC. But for descending, it's DESC. Okay. Now, one more thing. Uh, order by over here, I'm doing order by for a single column. I can use multiple column as well with comma separator. Just like over here, just a quick example over here, over here experience six, six over there, but which six I'll be coming first? Which two I'll be coming, I mean, earlier and which two I'll be proceeding later. Then I need to use, let me don't use this thing as of now for ease of the okay so two are coming first which two i'll be coming first then uh, let's say i'll be doing on top of experience and on top of department okay so when we have two experience then department will play the role so which okay let me run it so which one i'm keeping earlier based on that it will be shorted first when we have two things then we'll be taking into consideration of department. So first we are short shorting the experience 2, 2, 2, but which two will be coming first? Whose department is coming first? Just like BPO, B starting first, that's why it's coming first. Just like when we are shorting with multiple columns, 
So the first one is getting precedence. And the second one, when the two things are same, then the second one will be playing the role. Okay. We can use multiple things as well. How many uh, uh, things I want to short? Uh, I want to short experiences descending. I can put descending over here. Department with ascending, I can put in this manner. Okay. This is as per my wish. Any doubt for shorting thing? Short. Uh, can you order, order it by... by... Yeah. Sorry. Uh, can me. you order uh, it by the date of birth? Like, I just want to see how the dates work. Okay. Okay. DSC means the most recent one will be coming first. Fine. If we do not put DSC. Okay, null is uh, their precedent giving precedence null value earlier. Null is nothing means almost tending to zero. They are mean, meaning over here. That means those are coming first. Then this, 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 this. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I hope Rahul, you also go. I mean, receives lots of concept for today. Correct. As the, I mean, I'm learning with very basic things. I hope there'll be no issue. But DDL and DML, if you just get it clarified, how we have created this table, that's the concept is left with you. So that we have covered in first two days. So it will be totally clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please do check. I think uh, I'm not sure whether tomorrow classes should be there. Uh, Lohit or any one of the admin team, they will be let us know. If we do not have the class, please uh, go through the recording. Ramya, you can practice the things by your own in your machine. And please try to solve this thing. The, uh, the exercise should hardly take 15 minutes for each exercise. So within half an hour, it, you can complete this thing. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm giving this exercise to all of you. Please solve it and the first portion only. And I, I found lots of people didn't join today. So if you have anyone's contact with you, please also tell them. I'm putting the thing in the group, but you can also, if anyone is having contact or anything, you can also tell. It will be helpful for them as well. Uh, the okay. next day we'll be starting with uh, the more things on top of DQL. DQL is a first thing and uh, I'll be showing you this concatenation operator on that day as well. Keep remembering if I just forgot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's all for today's session. Let's connect tomorrow. Uh, maybe tomorrow or Monday. Let's see. Okay. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.